Okay, everyone. Good morning. Thank you all for, uh, for coming to this talk. My name is uh, Kostas, and I'm going to talk to you about a project that we have been working on for the past three or four years, and it has to do with uh, one of the core OWASP mission, which is education and training. A little bit of information about me. I have more than 10 years of experience in information and application security, both as a consultant and as an academic researcher. Uh, currently, I'm leading the information security services team at uh, OTE. I'm based in Athens, Greece. OTE is the largest telco uh, in Greece, and we're offering information security services to our clients. Uh, I've been um, volunteering with OWASP since 2005 as the Greek chapter leader, and lately as the leader of the Academic Challenges Project, which I'm going to talk to you about. And uh, I have uh, quite an experience working with uh, the academia and some universities, teaching some application security and information security courses there. So what I want to do is share part of my experience there and how we try to solve some issues that we found while teaching at universities. And as you will find out, such issues can also be found while teaching professionals and developers. So our effort here is to provide a tool that can facilitate uh, the educational process, whether you're teaching at a university or at um, uh, professional training. Uh, just to get a glimpse of uh, who you are and what you're doing, uh, is any of you related to a university, either as a tutor or teacher? Quite a few of you, okay. So, uh, again, this is uh, my teams and my experience uh, as a university teacher and also as a professional uh, educator. And rest assured that no students were harmed in the process. Uh, as you'll find out, students were very excited to participate and uh, to use our uh, tool. So uh, my colleagues and, my, and I, uh, which uh, who are teaching at some large universities in Greece, had to face some challenges. Uh, Vasilis Vlachos, a colleague of mine, is teaching at the university in Larissa, which is uh, three hours outside of Athens. And every semester he has to teach application security to more than 300 students. So he has 300, 300 students in an auditorium, and he has to give them all the knowledge and get them excited about application security. Now, as you understand, this is quite of a challenge, because if you have 300 students, some of them will just want to pass the course, get a passing grade, and move along. Some of them will be maybe interested in the course, see what it is about, but might get bored in the process, just seeing PowerPoint presentations. And Quite a few of them might be really interested in application security, might, be, might get excited by the course, and might want to continue and move on and become application security professionals. At the same time, what we have uh, witnessed, and what I have witnessed as back when I was a computer science student, was that we have very good curriculum and very good process to, develop, to, to produce good developers. So back when I was studying computer science, I learned all about development, I learned all about development methodologies, and uh, I became a really good developer. However, no one told me about security. No one told me how I should integrate security into the development process, what I should take care of, uh, what are the pitfalls, and what are the security bugs, how should I protect myself against them. So we definitely identified a gap there. And uh, so there are two challenges. Uh, educate developers even before they become developers while they're students, and also find a way to address uh, a, a variety of students and make them excited about application security. So this is how we came about and uh, created the Academic Challenges Project. The initial idea was to create a few challenges, uh, practical challenges, so that the students could have some hands-on experience uh, without the need to create a specific lab. So it should be an easy uh, challenge for the student to get them excited they should uh, have the possibility to have some hands-on experience and find the bugs for themselves. And at the same time, it should be easy to, de to deploy for the professor so that he shouldn't spend a lot of time building a lab, making sure it's secure, giving access to the students, and so on. Uh, so we created the Academic Challenges. This was back in 2010. Uh, actually, a couple of colleagues of ours from the industry that uh, had a passion about application security created the initial set of challenges. And then the project just kicked off. Uh, we have made some significant projects for the last couple of years, and part of this uh, progress is due to the Google Summer of Code program. Uh, we were involved in Google Summer of Code along with OWASP since 2012. So this was our second year in the Google Summer of Code project. And uh, the students that worked on it 
uh, they actually made some significant progress, as you will see in the presentation. What we also actually found out was that, uh, apart from Greece, a lot of other professors and a lot of other institutions were interested in the project, and they started to adopt it. So practically, without doing any specific uh, uh, development or advertisement of the project, we had emails from all over the world saying that, hey, we're using Hackademic in our university. Students are really excited. Thank you for the project. How can we assist you to, to develop the project? And actually, it's a quite a good coincidence that the NJIT, the New Jersey Institute of Technology, has also volunteered to develop Hackademic and has also done some work on it. And as you can see, there are several other countries that are currently using our project. So initially, it was just a set of 10 challenges that were integrated into a Joomla interface. Everything, was on, everything is online. Everything is on the internet. Uh, so you, a student can simply log in, create an account. Again, in the beginning, it was a Joomla interface. And then they can start solving the challenges getting their hands on and trying to see what the vulnerabilities are. Uh, the topics varied and the difficulty varied from uh, simple and beginner's uh, difficulty to intermediate and uh, more um, difficult levels. Uh, we didn't want the students to get disappointed by having difficult challenges to solve. We wanted, to get, we wanted them to get them involved. And uh, at the same time, we introduced several additional challenges that had to do with crypto, SQL injection, and we even have entire virtual machines that are uploaded on the, on the website, and you can download them and get your hands on. However, this, this was not a simple, uh, vulnerable web application. Again, we wanted to make the students involved. We wanted to get them excited. So we introduced some rules behind the challenges. So each challenge needs to have a myth behind it. It needs to have a story, uh, which might be totally fake. But again, it makes the students get excited. There must be a specific topic, and very important for the academic community, there must be a single answer to each challenge. So you, might, you need to have a deterministic solution, a single solution for each challenge, so that students cannot complain that there are different solutions and someone might be cheating or find solutions that are not 100% correct. It also should be clear to the student when they have solved the challenge. So they need to know exactly the moment when they have passed this challenge and they can move along. As we found out in the process, right from the, very right from the very beginning, students got really excited about it. They got involved. Actually, we introduced the challenges as assignments, and we found out that students would move on to the next assignment even before we introduced it. They were, again, really excited. And that's because usually students expect a typical text-based uh, lecture using a PowerPoint and just the teacher speaking and speaking and speaking and getting them bored. So for the first time, they had the chance to really get their hands on and get to know what application security really is. And uh, this is not something that I'm just saying. We actually introduced some questionnaires to the students and got some statistics, which uh, actually proved that the students got really interested in this. And we repeat the statistics year after year. And the result is that more than 50% of the class thinks that this is a, they have a positive outcome of the exercises and feel excited about it, which is a really good percentage. Bear in mind that we're talking about classes of 300 students, so it's quite a lot of people there. So that was the, the beginning. And uh, after that, we realized that there was a lot of interest from the community and even from the students to build new challenges. So a lot of students, after completing the course, came back to us and said, I have an idea for a challenge. How can I integrate it into your project? How can I build more challenges? And uh, also other universities started using the project and started to have uh, additional requirements, mainly in the back end, mainly in the interface that is needed to process the students' progress, see how they're doing, grade them, and so on. So we understood that there is a need to work on a more sophisticated interface and a more custom interface. Joomla was an okay thing to start with and get us started, but after that we needed to... Um, implement something more sophisticated, and also facilitate the need to import new challenges. At that time, the first Google Summer of Code uh, came along, so uh, we had the chance to uh, in, uh, involve a student from India that worked on our project and developed a completely new uh, user interface. Uh, you'll have a chance to see it at the demo at the end of the presentation, which introduced some significant features. The first one of them was role-based access control. So uh, in our new user interface, we have different roles. Obviously, we have a full administrator that can uh, modify every setting. We have students that can just solve the challenges, see their progress, 
see their ranking among, among other students and also their ranking on a global scale, so what they're doing against their own class and also other classes all over the world. And we have a teacher role where the teacher can see how his class is doing, assign challenges one at a time, grade the class, post articles, and so on. So we have a, now a whole new uh, interface and a whole new tool that a teacher can use to manage his or her class and also maybe post some content that can be used to teach uh, the students. Announcements, articles, and so on. Another new feature was the ability to uh, import new challenges in a semi-automated way. So we have built a, a workflow that anyone from the community can post a new challenge. This is a nearly automated procedure. You need to have teacher privileges to be able to do it. So uh, we understand that the teacher has sufficient knowledge that the challenge is working uh, properly, and so we give, them, we give him the ability to upload the new challenge. So what you can actually do is, if you're a teacher, you can upload the code of the challenge uh, in a zip file. Uh, the entire project is in PHP, so it's really simple to develop a, a challenge. We have uh, exact procedures and exact uh, guidelines on what you need to do to develop a new challenge. So you, you produce your code, you put it on a zip file, you upload it on the, on the portal. Uh, you, you also include some metadata, like the title of the challenge, the description, how difficult it is, how much time you expect the student to take to, to solve it. Uh, then on the back end, an administrator, someone from our team, a volunteer, checks the validity of the challenge, see if there's any malicious code, enables the challenge, and uh, it's there. It's publicly available to everyone, and now everyone can start using it. Another issue that we faced was the, the grading, uh, how we, we will be able to grade students. Now, if you have used other vulnerable applications like WebGoat, you already know that uh, most vulnerable web applications have a binary grading system. So you either solve the challenge or you don't solve it. So this is either zero or one. However, universities typically don't work this way. Students get a grade up to 100% or from zero to 10. And we need to be able to tell which student is good, which student is average, and which student is not doing well. So we understood that there was a need to introduce a more complex and more sophisticated grading system. So instead of a simple and binary system, we have implemented a more complex way, and we're still evolving it, on how to grade a student. So what we do is we count the maximum attempts that the student has made to solve the challenge. So a student might solve the challenge on his second attempt, or he might take 10, 20 attempts to solve it. We also record the time he needed to complete it. Maybe he just did it in five minutes. Maybe it took him one day, two days, and so on. <clears throat> we also record other metrics, like how many attempts per minute he, he did. This is to try to find out if they're actually cheating. So if they're introducing a, a known tool or an automated tool to try to solve the, uh, the challenge. And also if they're using known user agents. Maybe they have uh, downloaded an automated tool from the internet and try to, to cheat this way. Um, also, if we find out that the student is solving too many challenges on the first attempt, we kind of understand that uh, he either has got the solutions from someone else or he's, again, using a, a tool to solve the challenges, so he's cheating. And we can vary the grade according to these metrics. So finally, the student might get a grade which would be 10 if he's perfect, or 8 if he didn't do that, that well, or even less. Some additional enhancements that we have done is that we have uh, used the SAPI PHP to improve the security of the portal. Again, this is a custom-made web portal, so we had to integrate security right from the beginning. So we used SAPI to perform input validation, session management, and uh, input escaping. And we also have made, uh, during the past uh, six months or so, some access control improvements. Access control in this project was quite a challenge because practically you have two different um, sessions to handle. You have the session of the student that has access to the portal and sees the announcements, uh, sees the description of the challenges, progress, and so on. And then when he chooses to try a challenge, there is a different session that has to do with, the, uh, so with solving the challenge. Uh, these two sessions had to be integrated so that the portal knows when the student has successfully completed the challenge or how he's doing at the challenge. And uh, after finishing the challenge, the session that is challenge-based needs to be destroyed. So it was a quite challenging environment, but we managed to 
um, improve the access control mechanism. We have also implemented an installer. So the philosophy behind Hackademic is that it's available on the internet and everyone can use it freely. But if you want to implement it in your own environment and your own lab, it has a simple installer. You can uh, install it on any environment that has a lamp or a uh, Apache Tomcat and PHP and MySQL uh, services. And we have also introduced the ability to have multiple solutions for challenge. This was a request by the community uh, to be able to provide variable solutions so that there is no single challenge and that the challenge, uh, that the solution might be different for each student. This was mainly done to avoid students copying from each other. So if the solution is different for each student or for each group of students, uh, you can uh, prevent uh, copying. So during the Google Summer of Code uh, 2013, last summer, we had a student working on a significant improvement, which, had, which was a plugin API. So we implemented a complete plugin API that gives the possibility to anyone from the community to extend Hackademic however you want. So now this is available for everyone. So there are endless, practically endless possibilities to extend Hackademic, to change functionality, add functionality without changing the core, the core code. For example, you can create uh, presentation themes. You can add uh, connection to LDAP or Active Directory and import users from it. And um, there is a very detailed guide on what you can do, uh, what actions you can perform, what execution points and callbacks you can, uh, inter uh, you can call. And uh, there is documentation that tells you how you can implement your own plugin. Now, the idea behind all this is to engage the community into uh, an, education, an educational collabor collaboration to produce content and labs for the academic and the professional community. So what we, want to, what we vision is an ecosystem that uh, involves students, teachers, educators, and also professionals in the community. So ideally, Professionals in the community can contribute to Hackademic by providing new challenges, by providing plugins that are useful to others. Teachers can also use Hackademic in their own classes, uh, get back to us with feedback and uh, ideas to expand this and make this more useful for them. And then students are the most important aspect of it because they're the consumers of the project. And the feedback we've got so far is really positive and we'd like to expand this to as many universities as possible if, of course, you find it um, useful. Now, of course, we're, we're not done and we still have a lot of work to do. This is all volunteer-based and uh, so we are spending our uh, free time on it. And we have uh, some issues that we're currently working on, the most important of which is documentation. So we're working on a user's guide so that every teacher knows uh, what he can do and how everything can be performed. We, what the community has asked is also for us to release a hardened VM version. So you have a virtual machine with Hackademic implemented. You can deploy it uh, very easily. Uh, we're nearly there with the virtual machine and we will be uploading it soon. Um, while implementing a SAP PHP, we found out that some libraries are outdated. Uh, I think that the, the guys during the project summit the past couple of days have made some improvements, but we're still looking for a more modern uh, library to, sec to implement security in PHP. We also, want to, we also want to implement questionnaires on the user interface. So when a student finishes all the challenges, he can be presented with a questionnaire and give us feedback on uh, the experience from Hackademic. We have been doing this manually, so we want to integrate it in the, in the user interface. And on top of that, if we integrate the possibility for questionnaires, you also have the possibility for, the ex for exams. So you can introduce new questions for the students that can act as exams to find out if the students actually learned something from the challenges or if they just found some of the solutions and uh, completed the solutions by copying and cheating. <coughs> we also want to give the possibility and to add teaching content, so ready-made content that the teacher can use to uh, deliver some content as well. And uh, also implement a reporting mechanism uh, we are trying to make Hackademic also applicable to business environments and to educate developers. And uh, reporting is very important, uh, both as a compliance mechanism to see uh, what percentage of your developers has been educated and has completed the challenge uh, successfully, uh, or um, how well they have been doing. And it's the same thing for students. A lot of teachers want to get statistics on how their students performed throughout the semester. 
So what I, what I want to do now is, for the next 10 minutes or, or so, show you what we have been, um, uh, how the interface looks like. Again, it's, everything is on the internet. Give me a minute to... So the, the URL is hackademic.eu. And uh, er, anyone can just type the URL in, uh, create an account, and start using it. I have logged myself in as, a, uh, as an administrator. Uh, so you can see all the features. Uh, what you can do is actually you have a, an article management possibility. You, can, uh, you have articles that you can post to your students that everyone can see. Right now, there is only one welcome message that says, hi, this is academic. And uh, you can find the code here. But you can add your own articles or announcements so that students can see uh, with a very simple uh, user interface. Uh, you can also manage the users and the classes. Uh, so right now I'm a global admin, so I can see all the users. Uh, for example, uh, myself, uh, I can see my name, my email, and so on. And I also can see what uh, class I'm in. So I'm in the global class, class right now. If I want to create a new class, I just add a class. Very simply. And then I can get in the class and start adding students. So I can add myself to the class and uh, import as many students as I wish. Now, the other thing you can do with classes is import both students and challenges. So, for example, in the global class, you can see which students are enrolled. And you can also see what challenges are assigned to this class. Now, some teachers choose to assign all challenges at once, while, whereas some other teachers choose to assign one uh, challenge per week, for example, so that they act as an uh, assignment. So we have implemented this possibility. And uh, we can also assign different scoring rules for each, for each challenge. So each challenge can have its own scoring rules. So for example, for challenge one, you can edit the scoring rules. Otherwise, the default rules apply. And what you can do is specify the maximum number of attempts the student can perform. So we, for example, we think that this challenge needs at, at most 10 different attempts to be solved. So if a student takes more than 10 attempts, there's a penalty on his grade. So after 10 attempts, the student will lose two points. So it will be uh, his grade minus two points. Yeah. For, uh, no. If he goes past ten attempts, he loses two points. And he can make as many attempts as he wants. Then. So the, the score for successful attempt for this challenge is five. So if a student makes more than ten attempts, he's going to get three. Uh, I can make the score even bigger, depending on the difficulty of the challenge. So I, this is all custom. I can um, configure it as, as I want. Uh, we can also specify a maximum duration for the challenge. And this is done in seconds. So I can say that this challenge should be solved in two minutes. So it's 120 seconds. If the student takes more than two minutes to solve the challenge, again, there's a penalty. For example, one point. Uh, again, I have a, a metric for maximum attempts per minute. This is to identify if the user is if the student is using an automated tool. So if I get like more than 10 attempts per minute, then maybe the student is cheating. Uh, we also have some bonus points. And this is something we, that we have seen in real life. Some students complete the challenge and try to find other solutions or what's going on behind the application and try some additional attempts. If we want to, re to reward this, we can give them some extra points for uh, attempting more for trying to solve the challenge even after they have successfully solved it. So we can give them five points for that. And uh, we also try to track known user agents. So if a user or if a student is using a known tool to break the application, we can track that and we can remove points as a penalty because this means cheating for us. And so you, you understand that this is still evolving, that we're trying to make scoring a bit more complex and a bit more advanced, so well, we can really tell who is good and who is just average. And uh, also, the, the, there is a add new challenge functionality, as I said before. First of all, you can see all the challenges uh, that uh, currently exist. And if you want, you can add your own challenge. 
uh, you need to specify a title, who the author of the challenge is, so that we can attribute the challenge to a specific person. What's the category of the challenge? SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and so on. What's the difficulty level? And what's the expected duration that the, an average student needs to, to take to, in order to solve the challenge? You need to provide a description. And uh, after you, you complete all that, you, you complete all this, you press continue, and you, you will need to upload a zip file that contains the code of the challenge. This is not automatically uploaded to the system. Uh, for, for security reasons, we need an admin to check the containers of the code and actually approve the upload pr procedure. But this is done really fast. So what we want to do is to facilitate contributions from the community and make this really simple for you to contribute new challenges. And we actually have had some uh, very important contributions, especially from, uh, from students. Now, from a, from a student's perspective, let me log in as a student. I can see what uh, challenges my class is assigned, or I am assigned, so I have 10 challenges in my class that I need to solve. I can see how I am doing. For example, uh, <coughs> I have solved challenge number three uh, on that date, but I have not solved any other challenges so far. I can see my ranking, where I stand uh, in my class or even globally. And I can actually start solving the challenges. So just to give you an idea of how we have created the challenges and the whole thing about the, the myth behind it and the story behind the challenge that makes students more engaged and excited. So the internet is giving me a bit of a hard time. Okay, so the, the first challenge, uh, let me spend a minute to, to read this to you because it's really funny. So the story is about uh, some agents that informed us that there is a reasonable suspicion that the site of this logistics company is uh, smuggling human organs. So the organization attracts its victims through advertisements for jobs with very high salaries. They choose those ones that uh, do not have many relatives. They kill them, and then they sell their organs. So again, this is a fake story, but you know, uh, impersonate yourself as a student, and as a 19-year-old or 20-year-old student. It gets you kind of excited. So one of our agents has been hired by this company, and he has gone missing. So we want to know whether our agent is alive or not, but we cannot get in touch with him. And last time he communicated with us, he mentioned that we could contact him at the email address the company has supplied him with if there is a problem. Now, this is actually a hint for the student to solve the, uh, the challenge. The problem is that when we last talked to him, he had not a company email address yet, but he told us that his email can be found through the company's website. The only thing that we remember, and this is the hint, is that he was hired on Friday the 13th. We have, found, we have to find his email address and send it to us by using the central communication panel of the company's site. So this is the story. There's a hint in there, and then you, the students just start to try it. So they are faced with a login site, and they have to find the, how to log in to the website. So they start thinking about it. And uh, I don't want to get you into the challenge and the competing uh, process, but um, the idea here is because it's the first challenge and it's the most simple challenge, to get them looking at the source code and get them to look at places that are not visible. So a student can either look at the source code and check what the source code says, or much more simply, if they just select the website by accident, they will see that there are two words in there, white rabbit, which are painted white, so you cannot actually see them. You have to either look at the source code or just select the, the site. So if you enter white rabbit as a code, you will log into the website and now you have a different website, and you, again, remember, the goal is to find the email and send the email back to us. So apparently there is a send email capability, and we need to type the email there and post send in order to solve the challenge, but where's the email? So apparently the student has under, already understood that they need to start looking around the site and see what's going on. So they start clicking on various links, but nothing's really there, so when you click at the last link, you see that there is a picture over there. And if you see where the picture is located, there is a secret area in there. So you can see there is a secret area folder where the picture is located. So if you go into the secret area, you will find out that you can list the directory listings. And there's a text file. Then you open the text file. And remember, something had to do about Friday the 13th. This was a hint in the description. So there is an email that contains Friday the 13th. So Practically, that's the correct answer. You just copy the email into the send email form, and you just send it, and you have solved the challenge. 
So again, this is a really simple thing, but you understand the gist of it. We're getting the students excited, getting to work on application security using a simple example. And then we have more complicated challenges. We have like cross-site scripting challenges, uh, again, which can be really simple. Just try to exercise this simple uh, exercise, which is a typical JavaScript alert box. And we also have a, another challenge that looks exactly like that. We have only implemented some countermeasures behind, so the student needs to encode the message in order to pass the filter. And we even have more complicated uh, challenges that you can you have to execute code on the back end and so on. And this is all simulated, so there is no real danger for the web server. And this is why we have it online. This, everything is simulated, everything is safe, yet everything is realistic and gets the uh, students to understand how it works. Uh, so, uh, you get an idea about how the challenges work. Let's get back to the presentation. Uh, so this is the, the general idea. Uh, I'd like to thank the, my colleagues and my uh, the members of the community that have contributed to this project. Uh, there are a lot of contributions, there are a lot of people that are still working on Hackademic and we're looking to improving it. And uh, at the same time, uh, as a side note, I'd like to mention that uh, during the past couple of days in the project summit, we have done some work on how OWASP can help uh, training initiatives and education initiatives and develop some content to facilitate training developers and so on. And uh, for this matter, we will be creating a portal, a page on the wiki that contains modules that are free for use for anyone. They can be presentations, they can be videos, recordings, labs, demos, and everyone will be able eventually to download this content and deliver training to developers. Again, this is part of our mission, so it's really important to develop this content. However, on the same, si on the same side, we need content to start building this portal. So we ask for your help. If you are teaching application security, if you have some content and some presentations that you're willing to share, or even part of this content, please send an email to education at ovasp.org. This is an amazing opportunity for you to set and specify what the teaching material, the official OWASP teaching material will be. And it's an opportunity for you that your teaching material will be included in the official OWASP teaching material. So if you, again, if you have, please send an email to education at ovasp.org. We will be sending announcements after the conference asking for contributions, so uh, please help us. Now, if you want to check Academic out, the address is hackademic.eu. You can create your own account. At this moment, there is a manual <coughs> uh, activation procedure, so someone will need to activate your account. But uh, please log in, try it out. If you are a teacher and you want to use it, please send us an email, and we can enable you as a teacher. And we're looking forward to your uh, feedback on this. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, I can, we have some time I can answer. Yeah, so the question is, if I understand correctly, that this is a PHP-based vulnerable system. How can we add different languages or .NET applications and so on? Um, well, they, the truth is that the, the back end is based on PHP. And uh, another idea that we've been having for a while is to create sandboxed uh, challenges. So eventually, a user will be presented with a sandbox, and the vulnerable application will be running on that sandbox. Now, we are still in the design process, but if we implement this, we will be able to implement additional uh, languages and additional applications on them. So, yeah, this is definitely a good idea, and we're working on it. Uh, I think this, is, uh, this will be a, a subject for the next Google Summer of Code, to implement the sandbox, and then we'll, practi we'll practically have endless possibilities. Any other? Yeah. Yeah? 
we have, again, we have not uploaded the VM version yet. Uh, we're in the final process of hardening it because we want to make sure that the VM that you get is really hardened and that no one can mess around with it. Uh, so again, if you want an early version of it before it becomes available, just send us an email and uh, I'll be more than happy to provide you with a VM version. Any other? Yeah. Yeah, I, I understand what you mean, that uh, there are some privacy, the student privacy concerns since we're posting the grades on the website. Well, uh, in the way that we have used it so far, these are not final grades. This is just a way to get students competing with each other. So this is just an indication of how they're doing. If you don't want to enable this, you can still stick to the default system. And uh, so students will have practically no grading at all. So it's totally up to the university to and the tutor to decide what they want to do. And on top of that, this is a completely open source application. So you can just, or you can ask us to change the code and disable the scoring system completely so you don't have privacy issues. Uh, so that's, that's practically it. Any other question? So thank you for being here. If you want to ask me something, I'll be right outside the room. So thanks for attending. <laughs>